Chapter 8, Section 7 is about modeling with exponential and power functions. And your essential question is how do you model data with exponential or power functions? So let's first differentiate between what an exponential function is and what a power function is. And it's all about the placement of the variables. So exponential. is going to be one where you have, for example, f of x equals a times b to the x power. So your base is some number, and then you're raising that to a variable power. And that's an exponential function, and that's what we've been dealing with. A power function is just a little bit different. So this is where you basically have a base that is now the exponent and it's being raised to some power. All right, so we are going to write these types of functions. Um, and really, all it's just like writing any other function. As long as we're given two points on that graph, we can come up with um, a function for it. So let's start with example one. We are going to write an exponential function whose graph passes through the two points, uh, let's see, 1, 6 and 3, 24. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write down the steps here. So step one, maybe I'll write out step. Let's do that so that way you kind of have a little guide to how to do this because it's going to kind of encompass everything that we've learned. You're going to have um, a system of equations that you're going to create and then you're going to solve that system of equations. Okay, so we are going to set up two equations. Okay, so now we're dealing with an exponential function, so we want to use this. Okay, so our two equations, and I'm going to use y instead of f of x just to make it a little bit easier on me, myself. Okay, so first of all, let's say y equals a times b to the x. Okay, so looking at my first point, you know, here's an x, here's a y. Second point, here's an x, here's a y. I'm going to basically take these and plug them into this equation, so I'm going to do it two times. So my first equation, I'll have 6 equals, well I don't know what a is and that's kind of what I need to figure out, okay, and I also don't know what b is, right, it's another thing I need to figure out, okay, but I do know x, x is 1, okay, now if I ever have an equation where I have two unknowns, then I need to set up a system of equations, which means in order to figure out what two unknowns are, I need to have two equations, okay, so my second equation then, I'm going to take my y, Set that equal to, I don't know what A is, I don't know what B is, but I do know that it's B to the X power, so B to the third power. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, so doing combinations on this would be really, really challenging because we have the exponents. So the better way to do this is to use substitution. So our second step will be to solve the system using substitution. Okay, so I'm going to want to look at my two equations. And I'm going to want to say to myself, which one's going to be easier to plug into the other one? Which variable is going to be easier to solve for? And you usually want to look for, hopefully, the case will be that you'll have one of your equations where maybe you don't have such a big exponent, um, or maybe even you're lucky and you're like your exponent zero. That's usually really easy. Um, so when I'm looking at these two, I say to myself, well, this one's going to be a little bit easier to work with and maybe plug into other things. So I'm going to solve this one for one of the variables first. And I'm going to solve it for A because when I look at this, I'm thinking to myself, do I want to plug something in and cube it? I don't know. That could get challenging. Okay, so we want to make this as easy on ourselves as possible. So I'm going to solve the first equation for A. So that's just 6 
divided by b, b to the first power, is going to equal a. Okay, now I'm going to take that number or that value for a. I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to plug it in for a in the other equation. Nothing new here. We did this a lot with linear equations. Okay, so I'm going to have 24 equals, now I'm going to have, instead of A, I'm going to put 6 over B. Okay, writing that over 1 so that I realize, hey, I'm multiplying straight across, which really means I can look for in the numerator and denominator any common factors. And I can see that this will basically become B squared. So again, that's like B to the third over B to the first. I just subtract the exponents because I have like bases. So I get b squared in the numerator. So I now have this equation. Okay, let's go ahead and solve for b squared. So I get b squared equals 4. Okay, but let's take the square root of that. So I get b equals positive or negative 2. Okay, so I have two options here now. My b can be one of these two numbers. So it'll be either growth where my base is going to be the positive of those or it can be decay where my base would be Oh, actually, it can't be either one of those, right? Because if it's decay, then, okay, so either way, um, my base has to be positive, okay? So, right, B has to always be positive. It's the A that can be positive or negative, okay? So we're going to say, fine, then B is going to be positive. So B is actually going to be 2. I'm going to throw away that negative, okay? So maybe write yourself a little note, use positive since B's got to be greater than zero. Maybe put that in parentheses so it stands out. All right, now what do you think I'm going to do with this B? Well, now I can use what I've figured out for B. I can plug that back in over here to get my A. So I can say, great, well, 6 divided by my B, which is 2, is going to give me my A. So A is actually 3. Okay, which takes us to our last step. I think this is really good. Pretty simple problem. So step 3 is to write the equation. I know my A, I know my B, I just need to plug it back into this. So you can write it F of X, you can write it Y equals. I'm going to go ahead and go with F of X. Now it was a, so that's 3, times the base raised to the exponent, which is your variable. So there's my exponential function. Okay, now let's try one that is a power function. I think I'm going to flip my paper over. I think I'm running out of room here. So for example 2, we're going to write a power function. whose graph passes two five and six nine. Okay, well let's remember that a power function, and I'm going to use y equals this time, it's going to be my a this time, my base is my exponent, so raised to some power, okay? All right, so we'll just go ahead and go through the steps. I'll label the steps, but we won't write out the actual directions again. So step one is to set up those two equations that you're going to use for your system, just using the two points that you have here. So let's see, I'm going to have 5 equals a times, now this time I know my x. My x is going to be 2 
to some power. So that's one equation. And then the other equation is going to be, let's see, 9 equals, I don't know, A, times my X is going to be 6 to some base. I'm sorry, to some B power. B, that's a bad one to use probably because I always want to say base whenever I see B. Okay, so step two now, I'm going to go ahead and use some substitution. So this is substitution. So it might be easy to go ahead and, you know, both of these are raised to some power I don't know. I'm just going to solve either one of these for A. So I'll start with this first one and just solve for A. So I've got 5 divided by 2 to the B power equaling A. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll take this A and I'll plug it into that equation. So now I get 9 equals, let's see, 5 to the 2B times 6 to the B. Now this is where you might get stuck. So, you know, I, okay, let me rewrite this. This is really 9 equals, because this is 6 to the B power over 1. So this is really 5 times 6 to the B power over 2 to the B power. And so you should be asking yourself, well, do these have like bases? Because if so, maybe I could subtract these. Um, maybe is there a way I can get like bases? There definitely is a way to get like bases. So here's what I want you to remember. Uh, let's see, when you had, for example, a times b to the x power, that was the same thing as a to the x times b to the x, right? So I can kind of do a similar thing here. Maybe there's a common factor in 6 where I can get that common factor raised to the b power and I can reduce. Okay, so what am I talking about? Well, my base here is 2. Is there a factor of 2 in 6? There is. So really I can rewrite 6 to the b, I'll put it in parentheses, as 2 times 3 to the b power all over 2 to the b power. Okay, so now I'm going to take that b power and give it to each thing inside those parentheses. So really this is 9 equals 5 times 2 to the b power times 3 to the b power all over 2 to the b power. So you can see I have a common factor now in numerator and denominator. So those go away. Whew, thank goodness. Otherwise I was going to get quite confusing. Okay, all right, so I've now got basically 5 times 3 to the b. So now my goal is to solve for b. Okay, so here's how we're going to solve for b. We're going to get the power all by itself. Okay, so 3 to the b needs to get all by itself. So I need to divide both sides by 5. So I'll have 9 divided by 5. Let's see, I think I'm off the screen equals 3 to the b power. Now how do you get the b power out of being a power? We just learned about this, and this is why logarithms are so awesome. You're going to take the logarithm, it could be the ln or it could be log base 10, either way works, but you're going to do that on both sides so that you can use that power property to bring down the power. Okay, so I'm going to take log of 9 fifths, and on this other side, I'm going to do log of 3 to the b. Okay, I'm, I'm writing out all the steps because I want you to be able to follow this. Go back and look at this. All right, so now I'm going to do log of 9 fifths. Leave that side alone. This side, this is why I do log. So I can bring down that power now. So this is really b times log of 3. And now I'm going to solve for b by dividing, right, it's b times this number, log of 3. Try it. Go on your calculator and see if you can just have a log. Just type log in and press enter. No, you have to have log with the input. So this is one number being multiplied to b. So I'm going to divide now both sides by log of 3. So b is going to equal... Whatever that is, log of 9 fifths divided by log of 3. 
And in order to do that, you're going to need a calculator. There's no way around it, so let's see. Can you guys see this one on here? I think so. Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to type in log of 9 divided by 5. And then from that, oh, I should probably have, I'm going to be really careful here and put some extra parentheses because I want the whole thing, not just the 9 fifths. I want the whole log of 9 fifths being divided by log of 3. Okay, and I get approximately 5, uh, 0.535. So I'm getting that B is approximately 0 0.535. So now I can take that value of B and I can plug it back into where I had my A solved for, which is back up here. Right, I've got A solved for. So I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to take this B, I'm going to draw myself an arrow. So plug it back in up there, okay? So really now this is going to be 5 over 2 to the 0 0.535 equals A. Put that in my calculator so I can get my A value. Let's see, I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do 5 divided by 2, and the 2 is getting raised to the 0.535 power. It's going to approximate it, which is okay. So I'm getting approximately 3.451. So A is approximately 3.451. And now I can use my A and my B to go back to my original function here and plug everything in and have a function. So I'll use f of x for that now. So f of x is going to be whatever my a was, and my a was 3.451, approximately, times my base. Okay, well, let's see. My base, sorry, times x, not my base, times x, to my b power. I need to not do this, <laughs> but too late. We've already done the video. So to my b power. So, uh to the 0 0.535. Okay, so there's your power function. Again, your power function, your base is going to be your input, right? It's going to be a variable, and it really it's your independent variable because it's the numbers that you can choose to plug in and then get your dependent variables out, okay? So on page 514 in your book, there is an actual problem that we can use to model um, or to, to create. We could use what we just learned to create a model um, that represents the situation. So, um, I mean, that's how it usually is going to be. In the real world, you're not just going to be, somebody's not just going to come up to you and say, write an exponential model. In the real world, somebody's going to have gathered a bunch of data in some type of organized table like this one, maybe. Okay, and then from there, you're going to want to model that information. Okay, so let's come up with, um, well, let's first read the situation, and then we'll come up with an exponential model for it. Okay, so first of all, notice how it says modeling data. You're going to want to probably use your graphing calculator to perform exponential regression or power regression. So that basically means um, to come up with an equation. However, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use um, what we've just learned to come up with an equation. And then what you guys are going to do is use your model um, and then your calculator to kind of calculate this stuff. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and, oh, let me read the, the situation to you. You have just created your own website. You are keeping track of the number of hits, the model of visits to the site. And the table shows the number Y of the hits that you've gotten in each of the first 10 months, where X is the month number. So this was page 514, number 54, and we're, we're given the fact that X is number of months, and Y is number of hits. 
uh, per month. So we were given this table that looks something, I'm not going to write down all of them, but I'll just write down a few. And we want to come up with an exponential model. Okay, well, we're going to start off with our exponential function. And our exponential function basically looks like this y equals a times b to the x power. And then our next thing that we want to do is we want to set up two separate equations. Okay, so what we can do is we can, how about, I think I'll use these two numbers, these two. So I think I'm going to go for this point and that point. Why am I using those numbers? I don't know. I just picked them. 70 looks better than 39 to me. So that's what I'm going to use. You can use any of them, okay? All right, so we're going to say then that Oh, let's see, I'm going to plug in x and y, so my first equation that I'll do is 22 equals a times b to the first, okay? I would always use, like, your first piece of data, it will either be 0 or a 1, and that's going to make your life a lot easier. I wouldn't start off at the very end of your table. Okay, so that's one equation, and then my other equation, I'll use 70 equals a times b to the x, in that situation it's 3. Okay, I'm going to use my first equation because that's the one that has just b to the first power. I'm going to solve for a there. So solving for a, I'm going to divide by b to the first power. So a is going to equal 22 over b. Okay, then I'll take that a value, plug it back in over here. So I'm going to have 70 equals 22 over b times b cubed. Okay, and then solving here, I can figure out what my b is. So I'm going to reduce, again, this is like, you know, b is over this whole thing. So in numerator and denominator, I've got like bases. I can subtract. So that's going to leave me with a b squared in the numerator. Okay, solving for b squared now, I'm going to get 20, I'm going to divide both sides by 22. So you get b squared equals whatever that is. And then the other thing that I need to do is I need to square root b now to get it by itself. And remember, we're going to throw away the negative 1 because um, we always want our base to be positive. So a might become negative, um, and that's okay, but we always want our base in an exponential function. It needs to be positive. Okay, so I'm going to square root 70 over 22. And so I'm going to get an approximation here, just using my calculator. I'll hit the square root of 70 divided by 22. So that's going to be approximately 1.784. Okay, so I'm going to take that B value now. And I'm going to plug it in over here so that I can get an approximate value for A. So A is going to approximately be 22 divided by 1.784. Doing that on my calculator. I get approximately 12.332. So coming back and writing my final exponential equation, which looks like this, I'm going to have, and I'll use f of x now, f of x, because it's a function of x, which means that x is our independent variable. It's the one that we get to choose whenever we make an in, input-output table. Um, and so then I'm going to have my a, which was approximately this, times, and you can put parentheses around it if you want. It's up to you, but because it's so large, I decided to put that, times your base, which is approximately 1.784, and that's going to be raised to the x power. So our function looks like this, so this would be part a. Now from that, so part b, 
According to your model, how many hits do you expect to have in the 12th month? Okay, well, let's go ahead and figure that out. So I'm going to take this equation. There's a couple of things I can do. I think I'm going to use my table, though, so I'm going to go ahead and put it into my graphing calculator. I can also double check to make sure that it looks like an actual exponential function. Obviously, my window is not very good. Uh, let's see here. So I need to be at least at 12 on my y-axis, and right now I'm not. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to go to my window. Let's see here. Oh, is it still working? Actually, I'm going to do zoom. Let's do a standard, which also is not going to work very well for me, I think, because I need to be a little bit higher than that. Right? If I plug 0 in here, I'm going to, my y intercept is going to be 12, which is good because we want to have at least 12 viewers. And you can see just from the data that they gave us that in month one, I got 22 viewers, right? Okay, so, or 22 hits. Okay, so I'm going to change. I, I'm, I'm keeping, I went to standard window so I could have the tens, positive and negative, on both axes. But now I think I should definitely change my window. And when I look at this data, at month 10, it's at 4,285. So I'm going to want this to at least be, for my, my Y max, you know, 5,000. But I think I'm going to go ahead and do 10,000. And then right now it's asking me to do time of 12. Um, so let me go ahead and put in, how about 20, just a little bit larger there. Let's see, is this an exponential function? Did I, did I get it right? Let's see. That looks pretty exponential to me. Okay, so it looks like I have an exponential function. Now from here, I have a couple of ways to figure out, because um, B asks, how many hits do you expect in the 12th month? Remember, the number of months was x. So that's what I want my x to be. So I could do a couple of things. I could go back to y1. I could put in 12 for y2 and I can um, figure out where they intersect. Or I could do my table set where I start the table at 12 and I'll just leave it there and let's see what it gives me as an output. Well at 12 months, wow I'm popular. I got 12,817 views. Okay, so let's see, B. At 12 months, I've got 12,817 hits. Nice. All right, so let's look at the last part of this problem. According to your model, how many hits would there be in the 34 month? What is wrong with this number? Okay, so let's check it out. So now I'm going to go back to my, you know, I could scroll down, um, but that's probably going to take a long time because I didn't do a very good job of changing my table in the right amount. So I'm going to go back and just say, let's go up to 24. I thought I made that change by one, but maybe I didn't. Get my table again. Oh my goodness, probably half of you don't even know what number that is. I hope that you do. So let's see. So this is going to be 1.33, right? 1.33 e to the seventh. So that really means the calculators, they write their scientific notation like that. That really means times 10 to the seventh power. And I can even go over here and see what that looks like. Okay, so if I actually click on it, it'll give me an even better approximation. Okay, so let me just show you scientific notation here. I know you were taught that a long time ago. This basically means multiply by a number with 10 seven, or sorry, with seven tens, which means you need to move your decimal place over seven times. Okay, so if I take 1.33 and now I move my decimal seven, seven places, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need to add 
those five zeros. Okay, so let's see. Put my commas in. I've got about 13 million. Okay, and that's a pretty good approximation. However, let's look over here. Um, this would probably be a better number. So what is that number? 13,320,174. Okay, so that's probably a better number. So I'm going to use that instead. Can we have um, decimal points of people? We can't, so I'm just going to leave it right there. So approximately 13 million. 320,174 three, three, 13, people or hits. I should use hits. Put that up above. What's wrong with that number? Just think about it. I mean, that seems pretty excessive. 13 million people. That is a lot of people. So in one year, I've done, you know, 12,000. It seems like then it would be more of a linear, you know, maybe the next year, maybe I double it, 24,000. But, um, you know, I'm not getting my hopes up. My YouTube videos, I don't get that many hits. I have to force kids to watch them. I have to give them grades in order to make them watch them. So, you know. 13 million just really seems like an extraordinary number. Um, it would be really hard to get that many people to start following you, no matter what your website is. Okay, I think that's enough.